Raise your hand if the Bubble Mew is surprising you. Last time we checked in on this card, we were at 170. It was at right at the 170 mark, and then it started to cool off for a minute, I believe. That was the last time we checked in on it. Well, it cooled off for for a minute, like, and then just continued to run. This card is over $200, TCG market price of 207 Last sold, I'm assuming this is a Japanese copy, 206 244 220 204, 214, 220. So the Bubble Mew from Paldean Fates. Also, I do want to remind you that the pull rates on this card, according to TCG Player, out of, I believe it was 1,500 packs, it's about one in 450 packs-ish for any specific special illustration rare from Paldean Fates. So this is not nearly as difficult to pull as some of the other cards, but uh, that's usually, uh, sorry, for other cards from other sets. Specialty sets usually have a easier pull rate, but it ain't stopping the Bubble Mew. Super adorable, this guy with the little, the Oddish and the Diglett, right? So, Paldean Fates, doing good things. Obviously, the market is super strong right now. Although, you know, I didn't, not that I didn't like this card, but just seeing that it would get to this point and kind of lead the way and blow the Charizard out of the water, you know, Charizard fatigue must be really settling in. We know, I know, I ranted about the, the Brilliant Stars Charizard. I won't today. But, um, so yeah, that's the Bubble Mew update. Also, PSA 10 sales, pulled that up. PSA 10 sales, these are the last solds. So these are all auctions, 475, 500, 550, 590, and then a buy it now for 589. So you can turn a $200 card into five, about, oh yeah, I mean, I would say this is kind of the low sale. If you exclude that, over $500. So that is, uh, that is an opportunity there. I remember a while ago, we looked at the no texture uh, PSA 10 Mew, sold for like 2,500. So yeah, there's bubble Mew money to be made. Paldean Fates though, we're gonna take a look at, so this is the Pokemon Center exclusive ETB, just continuing to go up. With a, with a $200 card, and I know that the PC ETBs are often, you know, it's a combination of being carried by the set and then the stamped promo. While Mimikyu, I feel like, is popular enough. You know, it's not, it's nowhere near like 151 PC ETBs, but 34% up in the past three months. And the one month chart, 17%, just like continuing to take off. Market price is 90, 92, 95. Last solds, we're seeing 85, 100, 89, 96, and 100. So it looks like we'll probably continue to see this to rise in the near future. We have, this is the regular Elite Trainer box with pretty massive gains. Just in the last three months, it went from like a low of like 41 up to 71. So that's pretty pretty big gains there. The one month chart shows 51% growth. And you know, we'll zoom out to the one year. It looks like it's definitely well at its one year high. Uh, it was at 53 back here uh, last year. So yeah, massive gains. Most sales happened right here on this week at $43. Yeah, and so the more expensive it is, the less sales that we're seeing uh, on this PC ETB. We also have a little bit of news. Uh, not that we haven't seen this card, but this is the Flareon, and I should have increased this size for you guys. So this is the Flareon from Prismatic Evolutions, AKA Terastal Festival, which is the Japanese version of what we're seeing here. This is the first high resolution photo that we're seeing, and he's, Flareon's running, he's got his crown, he's got his Terrapagos up here, and he's just running in like a little, this looks like a little ring, like Lord of the Rings style, that's what I'm getting. So, yeah, probably, you know what I feel like is a little bit unfortunate as a Gen 1, you know, uh, Gen 1 fan, Flareon, Jolteon, Vaporeon, kind of like the least, like the lesser evolutions, unfortunately, I feel like all the Gen 2 and up are like more popular. I don't know if that's true, but it just seems like they don't get quite as good of cards. But I do like the Lord of the Rings thing going. Let me know. Let me know in the comments if you guys like the Lord of the Rings. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Uh, next up, just real quick, if you guys are new to the channel, I am doing a giveaway as we approach 10,000 subscribers. We're going to do Surging Sparks, Sur blah, blah. Surging Sparks Booster Box, a Japanese 151 box, and a PSA 10 of around $100 of value. And you will need to be subscribed to enter, and I will make a dedicated video announcing exactly how to enter in a little bit as we get a little closer. So just make sure you're subscribed because that is a requirement. But then, you know, I also wanted to talk about Temporal Forces. Now, Temporal Forces is a set that I was vocal 
that I didn't like. And I think that I, when I go back and look at it, from a collecting side, from a collector, I don't particularly like this set, but just, I'm gonna, give me a second, right? I don't like this set, and I'll tell you why, but from an investment standpoint, it's done really well. 18% growth in the past three months, and 10% in the past month alone, we're seeing actually like one, we'll call, I know, I, I round up a lot. We'll call this 140 last solds, which would actually take this way over 130. So Temporal would be kind of finally getting up there. So that, those are that's some good moves. Um, the one-year chart, so pre-release prices were at pretty high, 141. This went as low as 100. So if we get up to 140, we're almost at its all-time high for Temporal Forces. We got a ways before we get back to MSRP. New MSRP is like 160, so we got a ways to go to there, but we'll keep an eye on this set, see where it ends up. The reason the reason I don't I didn't like this, okay, I know I want to expand upon that. Is because and it's not the artwork, because I actually the art, the style of the cards is actually really nice on a lot of these cards. I just didn't like this ver these versions of these Pokemon personally. The like they did Raikou dirty. This is kind of why I didn't like it. Um, it's kind of one of those things where it has grown on me. I don't like I don't really have I think I have I don't like in my collection personal collection I don't think I really have much temporal forces but in my sealed uh like investing side you know I do have I do have some there so you know that's kind of I think that's kind of why I was down on it was just I just didn't like it but you have to look at things and not think about if just you like it you got to understand that other people will so yeah this version of this pokemon I didn't like but this card the art of it is nice I like the lightning and everything going on so uh this is the most expensive card in the set we are at $88, 22% up in the past one month alone, 14% in the last three months. It dipped right here down to 67. Now it's up to 88. It is not at its one year high. At release, it was 50 bucks. You could have this card for 50 bucks. Ran up to 76, went back down to 49, and then ran up to about 100. And its recent low was around 67. So yeah, if you have the Raging Bolt, card if you got it if you pulled it or if you got it anywhere in any of these lows you're doing pretty good you're doing pretty good it'll be interesting to see if it can crack a hundred dollars that's i feel like that's a mental price point we'll see where it ends up one more card from this set the the walking wake same thing i just didn't like the version of this pokemon but this card the art i'm getting kind of like um uh, what was it called the what's the movie with the avatar the pandora world with all like the the lighting up uh, plants and stuff. Uh, I like this version of this po Pokemon a little bit more than the Raging Bolt, but anyways, um, this card is up. So this card's up on the three month chart about 20%, but the one month chart's on a little bit of a decline down almost 4%. It's at $58. However, there is a last sold at 68. There's a 60, 58. So, uh, it looks like the 68 might be the anomaly. We'll see only 57 currently listed on TCG player. This is just coming off of a one year high though. At release, 41 ran up to 56, back down to 37 was the low. And yeah, 60 was the uh, the high, the one year high there. So 68, this sale would be definitely a one year high on the walking wake. We got another, this is just like a little um, SV era update. There's just some stuff that's been going on. Like Stellar Crown. Well, not not the not the strongest set. I do think that the Terrapagos is nice. You got a nice Squirtle, nice Bulbasaur to chase. I think there's in, you know, like the Rainbow, like the Lapras. Like I think that's a good looking card. It's up. It's up a little bit. Seven percent. It had a low right here of 102, and it's ran up to from 102 to 115. Those are pretty solid gains. Seven percent in the past month. We'll zoom out to the one year. Pre-release prices were obviously high. We saw 130, 130, and then yeah, so that this is the low right here on the one year and last solds one pretty consistently call these 115s all the way down there's one at 110 but stellar crown even this is what's going to be interesting so when we when we're in such a strong market taking a look at some of the lesser sets the sets that haven't been doing as well seeing where they can end up um i 
you know, there's been some talk of Paradox Rift, which is a set I really like as well. Uh, I, super underrated. It has a lot of illustration writers that are actually really nice. Uh, but these lesser sets, we'll see where they end up. You know, maybe there could be some quicker, some quicker flips here. I don't know. Most, I don't really, personally, I don't really do any quick flips. However, I will, I want to address that at the end of the video because there is going to talk about uh, a product that I'm thinking about selling. Uh, I'll, I'll do that at the end. We just got two more products here. Speaking of like most stuff's going up right now, as far as booster boxes, not necessarily singles, though we do have a lot of singles on the rise. Twilight Masquerades, it's down. It's, it's coming down a little bit. Uh, almost 4% in the past month from 166 down to 156 so $10 drop. Still up on the three month chart though. We'll see where this ends up. Obviously the one year it's looking really good. It, it had its low of 101 and it's just continued to rise ever since then. Now, I, I'm not worried. So once again, for me, most of my, most of my selling is on like five to 10 year time frame is what I'm looking at. I still have yet to sell a single sealed product uh, that I have, you know, most of my, most of my investing is sword and shield and scarlet and violet era. So, uh, a lot of those products, in my opinion, haven't gotten to optimal points to sell yet. So for this set, for this dip for me, I'm not worried about it at all. It's not even phasing me. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just waiting this, waiting and like writing this out because this is not in my time frame for me. You know, my boxes for twilight were under, we were, I think we were at like in the nineties. So I, it hasn't even doubled for me yet. So I'm, I'm totally good. I understand, you know, if people were buying, seeing them go down, I can understand why you guys would be freaking out, but it just depends on your time frames. This is not uh, a quick flip box. Some of these are slow burn. So it's just interesting to see, this was like the most expensive box for a while. It's just uh, interesting to see it going down. Is it, is it going down because better sets are coming out like surging sparks? And then we have prismatic. Is it just getting kind of lost in the sauce? You know, let me know what you guys think in the comments, but the Greninja is not really going down. Like the boxes is going up 13% in the past three months. It continues to rise. It's still up 2% in the past month alone. The one year charts where it looks amazing. It's up 107% at its all time high of 328. Last solds 320, 314, 320, 325, 300. So maybe coming down just a little bit off of 328. We'll see where it ends up. But to address what I was talking about earlier, so as far as quick flips, and I haven't really sold any sealed product, I think like on my eBay, I think I have a Lost Origin box, like one listed, but it's at like 400. So I haven't sold anything. It's just, you know, I just put it up there. But um, something I have been thinking about, and I do think that this needs to be talked about, uh, it's somewhat important, is for surging sparks, my my costs when my pre-orders uh, got my pre-orders in, I, I paid a hundred a box is what I paid. We're at the point where I've already doubled my money, and if things continue, which I think that they will, I don't see why they will really slow down uh, for a while. Is thinking about moving out, taking some profits now. I understand that that would definitely qualify as a quick flip when I'm saying my target air window is five to 10 years. I'm not talking about selling all my boxes. I'm talking about just selling a few, selling a case, maybe two loading, like offloading some of these, probably just one case if I'm being honest. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not like super whale. I don't have like cases and cases and cases and pallets of every set. Um, that is something I'm trying to scale up towards, but you know, not everyone is, is, has that amount of resources, right? So I'm looking to move one to two cases, probably one, but I'm targeting more the $300 mark. I think that that would be a really great time. Uh, sell a case for 1800. It's kind of what I'm looking at. Uh, maybe 250, 275. It just depends. I'm going to try and like watch the market, see if things start like cooling off and leveling off because I kind of want to you know, just take some of prof that, those profits, recuperate some of that money so I can move that more into, I'm personally really excited for Team Rocket. So uh, just to allocate some more funds towards some more sets, especially since the barrier to entry is gonna be more expensive moving forward. Might be 120 a box pre-orders, I don't know. 
I do not have access to distribution, unfortunately. So, you know, I have to play the game. So anyways, that's something that I don't really talk about on the channel, really, because I haven't really done it. But that's something I'm thinking about, Surging Sparks, uh, 250 to 300, preferably 275, 300 range. 300, 300 is really my goal, but we'll see. Um, if I were to move that, I would probably try like Facebook Marketplace first, just to list it, see if I could sell that for cash. I don't have to have any fees, right? So uh, that would be possibly my first choice. And then maybe if there was a card show that I was attending, I might bring it if it lined up right with the timing. Other than that, I'm kind of, you know, eBay would be my, my third choice. But the fees, you know, 14% fees, um, you know, that's unfortunate. But so that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, for me personally. Um, the PC ETBs, though, I do have like surging PC ETBs. Uh, I'm not looking to move off those yet. Those, those will definitely be probably a little longer for sure. So, uh, but it is interesting to think about selling um, product now, which wasn't something I had really planned. Um, was looking, like I said, five, well, at least four, four years on some of the product, maybe at least maybe three, but years down the road, and then all of a sudden the market gets really crazy, and you know I might have to. I, I think it would be silly to not at least be thinking about it, right? So yeah, don't don't ever let anybody make you feel bad for taking profits. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to sell it a little earlier than you thought, then sell it for a little, you know, earlier than you thought. If you're making money, you're locking in profits, right? So um, yeah, that's my that's it's like a little market update. The muse popping off. There's a lot of stuff popping off, and I'm consider I'm thinking about selling some surging if things continue to rise. If things stagnate, you know, even like at around 200. We'll say, say they come down even like 180 to 220 ish. I'm just going to hold, you know, I'm just going to wait that out. It, it has to be a little bit more per box for me. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.